What's up guys, it's Danta and well, today, today I'm going to show you how to complete your Mage Tower challenge for your Windwalker Monk. I'm sorry if my voice sounds kind of scuffed, but uh, the hay fever is killing me. <laughs> now, this challenge is very easy. It's just probably one of the most easiest challenges that there is. So don't worry about your gear. Don't worry about anything. You will easily get this. Now, without making the intro any longer than it has to be, let's just go into the video. All right, so let's quickly go over my gear. Um, it's pretty much, uh, well, garbage. So just take whatever you have, make sure you got some versatility because it's one of the best tests for a monk. Besides that, take whatever you want, right? That's actually all I can say about that. So if you are a lazy ass garbage bag like me, you just go for all the passives that you can find. So first up, we have Eye of the Tiger. Now, Eye of the Tiger is kind of the same as like these other two. It doesn't really matter what you choose here, but I just don't like to have more buttons than I have to. So that's why I chose a passive. They all heal. You can choose whatever you like. Don't get me wrong. There's no wrong choice here. Next up, we have Cheat Torpedo. It's the same thing as with the first row. Just choose whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Next up, we have Ascension. Now, you can choose between Ascension or Fist of the White Tiger. I like Ascension way more because it allows me to be able to press more buttons. Um, basically, it gives you more Chi, it gives you more energy and regeneration. There won't be a time that you are standing still next to the boss and you are waiting till you can press something. That's why I like Ascension way more. It just allows me to keep spamming buttons. <laughs> next up, we have Good Karma. Good Karma is basically a must-have. If you don't have this one, you will probably die a lot. Next up, we have Diffuse Magic. Both of these bosses do magic damage, so, well, it's kind of necessary to have this talent. Next up, we have Dance of GG. This is also a necessary talent because this talent allows us to do a lot of AoE damage and it allows us to clear these adds that we have to kill very fast. The last talent that we are going to choose is Whirling Dragon Punch. This is kind of like an instant take as well, right? These other two talents are just not as good as a Whirling Dragon Punch and it gives us another spender. That's it for the talents. Let's finally get into the fight itself. Alright guys, so let's finally talk about the fight itself. So this fight is very easy. However, there are a couple of things that can kill you. So, first of all, you have to deal with two bosses, a big ass worm and a tauren. Now, these bosses are not hard to deal with at all, but it can get a little bit chaotic and that might actually just wipe you. Let's first talk about the Tauren itself. So the Tauren is very easy to deal with because he only has two abilities. He casts Earthquake, and he casts Fellblast. Now, Earthquake is very easy to get out of, just don't stand in his shit. That's all there is to it. Now, the other ability that he's going to cast is Fellblast. Interrupt that. Like, you don't want to have him cast that because it will just kill you. So, keep interrupting Fellblast, or whatever it's called. I think it's Fellblast. That's actually all there is to the Tauren. It's nothing special, but you just gotta keep in mind that you have to interrupt him. That's all. So as for the worm, um, well, he has more mechanics than the Tauren, but he's still easy to deal with. So the first thing that you will notice is that he has nine stacks of fell hardened skills. Fell hardened skills is a buff that gives him damage reduction taken from you. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that he loses all those stacks. Now, the way you are going to do that is by waiting till he's going underground. Now, whenever he's going underground, he will start charging at you. And what you want to do is you want to hide behind one of these rocks. Whenever he charges through a rock, one of his fell hardened skill stack will drop. I started attacking the worm whenever he had like three stacks left. You can wait till he has zero stacks left so you can do optimal damage to him, but it's totally up to you. Another ability that the worm has is a ability called Sonic Scream. Now Sonic Scream is a ability that does a lot of damage, but if you are confident enough that you can survive it, you don't have to interrupt it. What I'd suggest you do is just try to keep interrupting Sonic Scream at all time because that way you will just have a smoother run. Um, once again, it's totally up to you what you want to do. But what I did was I just used my Paralyze whenever he cast it Sonic Scream. So besides these boss abilities, there are two more things happening in the room. One of these things is that there will be these four eggs dropping on the ground and they will hatch into worms. What you want to do is just AoE them down and that's actually all there is to it. Now, don't worry if they hatch. 
because these worms don't do a lot of damage. So just AoE them down. And the best thing, by the way, is that whenever you kill those adds, they will drop an orb and that orb will heal you. So you literally can't die. So the last thing that happens in the room, there will be this totem dropping from the sky, I guess, or the torrent drops it. I'm not sure, but um, there will be this totem in the room and it starts channeling an ability. So what you want to do is just right click the totem it only has 2k hp so don't worry about that um if you don't destroy the totem it will stun you for a couple of seconds and that will probably kill you so yeah those are the abilities and mechanics that you have to watch out for now don't worry if you make a mistake you can probably just recover like touch of karma is very op um you also have your heals you also can just kill an ad and it will drop an orb which will heal you and you also have a damage reduction ability. So don't worry about that. Monks have pretty much a lot of self-sustain. Now the last important thing that you have to know about this fight is that whenever one of these bosses die, the other one gets 150% damage increase. Basically what you have to do this entire fight is make sure that you are cleaving both bosses down simultaneously. So what you have to do is make sure that the worm boss has 0 to 3 stacks of fell hardened skills. Preferably 0 stacks because then you can do your full damage on him. Now the reason that I'm saying that you have to DPS them equally is because if you are going to kill the Tauren whenever the worm is at 70% HP you will wipe because your leg sweep and your paralysis have a long cooldown. And whenever the worm is going to cast Sonic Scream, you are dead. That's why I'm saying cleave down both bosses simultaneously. Make sure that the Tauren dies whenever the worm is around 10 to 30% HP and you are fine. So yeah, guys, that's actually all you have to do for this fight. Now, I hope that this video helped you out a lot. And if it did, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like. And well, if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave it in the comment section below. Now, all I can say is congratulations with your ugly ass set and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.